Hey guys, how is it doing? Uh, it's been a long time again since my last video, I know, but it's not because I'm too lazy, it's because I'm too busy actually. Like I told you in my, uh, one of my previous videos, the shop was extremely busy now, just before Christmas. It's December 22nd by the way, so the shop is now officially closed for holidays for two weeks until January 7th. And in the last two weeks, or actually in the last four weeks, we had to finish two big projects that we started at the end of November and we successfully did it. I'm happy and uh, all customers are happy, bosses are happy, so everybody's happy. But we had to work hard, so we had to work overtime in the last week and uh, that didn't give me enough time to work on my Rusty Beauties, so they are sleeping in the other room. And I think now I'm, uh, I deserve a little bit of a break too, so I'm not uh, working on the Rusty Beauties for the next few days. I think after Christmas I'm going to be back on them because I don't have much to do. But for the few first few days of the vacation I'm going to take a break. I'm going to spend some more time with my son and it's going to be nice. Some Christmas movies, some stuff. We're going to have a nice dinner. We're also planning a visit to uh, Chef Tash tomorrow. Anyways, I'm not going to review too much about that. And uh, yeah, and even today I wasn't planning to come to the shop, but I had to come to pick up some stuff for tomorrow's visit to Chef Tash. It's not going to be work, it's going to be fun. Uh, and uh, I decided to spend a little bit time here in this afternoon just to have some fun with my lathe because I also haven't had time to, to play with the lathe. And it, you know, my hands are itching to, to put them on it, but I have no time for that. So I decided to spend a couple of hours here playing with it. And of course I'm gonna make a video so we can have fun together. So the park is this, <clears throat> just a simple road with some tread on it. And uh, what is it for? So we can put a nut on it, like this. See, it's nice, so we can play with the nut, go back and forth. And I think it's simple enough project that we can uh, practice on. So let me take the nut out so I can show you. Oh, it doesn't go this way. Which way does it go out? Oh, it doesn't go out this way too. Oh, so how did it go there? Oh! That's tricky. How did this not go there? It wasn't there just now, right? Hmm. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. That's interesting. Well, let's see how we can do that. So it is possible because I already did it. So let's see how to do that. And did I get your attention now? So now our project is going to be something very simple. Uh, I'm sure that you've already seen the final project, unlike me, I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> yeah, my idea is to do something simple as a beginning, because I already have plans for uh, many things that I want to do on the lathe, and they're mainly improvements for the lathe, but these are things that require uh, more skills that I still don't have, so I decided to start with something simple. And since you already saw the final result, I'm sure that you know what I'm talking about, right? Of course, uh, everybody who is uh, with into lathes knows about this uh, little puzzle. I find it very interesting and in the meantime it is very simple but it requires a couple of different uh, operations on the lathe, so that's a good uh, project that we can practice on. So I was debating whether I should use this nut because it's nice and clean. So I'm not going to use the boat, I'm going to use only the nut. But this thread is very very fine and I don't like the idea of practicing on something that is so delicate. I think a coarser thread is going to be better for this uh, item. So I think we're going to use this type of thread. So one of these two nuts and I like this one better because it's shiny on the other hand I want it to be bigger, as big as possible for some reason, I don't know why. So I think I'm going to use this nut and this is also going to give us opportunity to use our forge jaw chuck because I want to be able to lock it in this way on the chuck and face all six sides here and face here and also 
do some different operations on the nut itself and also we're gonna have to make threads of course a couple of uh, sets of threads so let's get it started to start with we have to figure out what is this thread I, don't, I have no idea if this is metric thread if it is uh, imperial what's the pitch or anything so I'm gonna get some tools and I'm gonna bring you back so now the easiest way to find out what thread is that would be to find the proper uh, tap for it but my biggest tap which is uh, 5 8 is too small for here so I'm guessing the only way to find that out is by finding the pitch and for the pitch I have those gauges here so I can work on the boat because the, thread, the nut is gonna be hard to work on but I, I have the boat so I can find uh, what TPI is that and if it is TPI at all or maybe it's metric we don't know so the difference between metric and uh, imperial pitch is that in uh, imperial they count the number of threads within one inch that's why it's called TPI threads per inch in metric they look at the distance between two threads for example this is uh, M14 by 2 this means that there is a distance of 2 millimeters between two of the threads okay I don't know if you see that but this is the 2.5 metric and it matches perfectly and doesn't have any play absolutely no play where the 10 TPI matches perfectly too but I don't know if you see that it has a little bit of play and for the size of the thread then we're gonna go into millimeters here into metric and we're gonna measure this is about 19 just out of curiosity I want to see how much is that 747 that's very close to three quarters so is it three quarters 10 TPI or is it 19 by 2.5? Hmm, if we measure the head of the boat, that's gonna tell us if this is exact metric 28. Well, yeah, looks like this is metric. So this thread is M19 by 2.5. Five. Now I meant to say in the beginning of the video and I didn't say it actually so I'm gonna say it here uh, I know that most of you guys are probably very very uh, familiar with all this but don't laugh at me too much because this video is intended not to show how to do stuff this is a video which shows how I learn stuff and hopefully there are other people that don't know much about lathes and they want to learn with me and we can have fun together and we can make mistakes together that we can learn from together and eventually this other part of you is gonna give us some sh uh, some tips actually and uh, tell us where we went wrong and how we could have done it better so if you are familiar with these things and you see that I, I do things wrong don't uh, hesitate to tell me that I do things wrong I will appreciate it but on the other side don't judge me too hard because you know I am a beginner too so don't tell me everybody knows that or don't expect that I know obvious stuff there's gonna be many things that I discover here and I'm gonna be like wow look at that and actually that's something that everybody knows <laughs> so yeah this video is uh, mostly oriented to people who don't know too much about lathes and they want to learn with me but also those of you guys who don't know too much about lathes don't expect me to give you too many tips and tricks I'm just gonna be learning on the go and I hope that you're gonna be learning with me too so now we have to choose a stock here and to choose a stock what we're gonna use let's see we need something that is at least uh, 20 millimeters thick okay so that's gonna be a metric project wow I haven't worked in millimeters for ages well to be honest I don't see anything except of this well that's gonna be nice because because it's a hex profile so it's gonna be it's gonna look like a boat actually at the end so let's see how much is that that's exactly 19 wow <laughs> wow 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 okay let's go ahead with that we're gonna use that all right so now that we have the size that we're looking for 
we need to also make a plan how we're gonna approach this. So where we're gonna cut it in the middle doesn't really matter right now, but before we cut it, let's face both sides just to get some practice. And there's our first problem right away. I thought that I was gonna be able to pass this through the hole in the chuck and uh, just be able to face one side but I totally forgot that here I can only put uh, 9 16 or I don't know how much was the opening of the chuck so unfortunately we can't face it right now so what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it so uh, basically the rule of thumb here according to this old Tony is uh, as far as I remember two or three thicknesses of the rod can stick out of the chuck so if this is 19 this means that uh, about 60 millimeters can stick out of the chuck so about this much so that's good that's good without any support we can do that and uh, that's only for the facing operation and after that we can uh, put our life center on this side and work with that so that's fine so first of all we will have to cut it i'm gonna cut it on the bend saw and then we're gonna face all four sides and we're gonna start from there. Okay, so I cut it in the middle, more or less. I eyeballed it so you can tell it wasn't exactly in the middle, but that's fine. So now let's chuck it here. Okay, let's see how this turns. Not bad. Okay, so in the last video I made a couple of mistakes and uh, David Fiddler gave me a lot of advices that I'm gonna follow. One of the advices was that you always have to chuck at, with at least two of the keys here because of the backlash of the chuck. I don't understand exactly what that this means, but I'm gonna follow this advice because he's an experienced guy. So thanks David for your advices. And uh, long sleeves, not good around late. Of course, it's cold in the shop right now, but I'm gonna just pull my sleeves up. Okay, so let's Let's face that. Okay, I have enough room before my compound hits the... Actually, I'm gonna bring it a little bit further. Because if my compound is too far back, sometimes my uh, slide hits the chip shield. Okay, now for facing operation, I'm gonna lock the carriage to the screw. I believe the screw is in neutral now, but just to make sure. Yes. Yeah, so the screw is in neutral, so I can lock the carriage here to the screw. So let's face this now. Wow, it needs more. Okay, looks good now and I tried to make it more smooth because that was our finishing cut. So I tried to turn the handle as smooth as possible. Now, before we flip it around and do the other side, I'm gonna have to turn this down to the 19 millimeters diameter. Only here at the end a little bit, or maybe not even 19, I'm gonna leave it at 20. Uh, I'm gonna eyeball it because we know that from here to here it's 19 millimeters, right? So here in the middle, we don't even have to um, turn it because it's gonna, be, it's gonna stay there. To turn this though, Maybe it's a good idea to put the life center here on this side to support it. So now we can turn it. So I think that's pretty much where we want to be, except here at the end. You see how these lines, they were supposed to be like this one, but you see this line is still... Okay, I think I'm gonna take another cut of uh, 10 more tau. Okay, that should be very very close to 19 mil right now but this is where I'm gonna leave it I'm gonna turn it around now 
and we're gonna face this other side. Here we still have a rough part, so we need another 20 or 30 tau even. Okay, I think that looks good. Actually looks great. So we're gonna do a little bit of chamfer here only and that's gonna be the end for this. Maybe a little bit more because there's a sharp part here. I think that's good. So we're done with this part, now we're gonna flip it around. We're gonna mark eight millimeters here. We're gonna have to use the support on the other side because only 8 millimeters into the chuck is not good and we're gonna turn the rest to 90 millimeters. So, 8 millimeters. Well you know what, I'm gonna do it 10. I want to have a little bit more inside the chuck so I'm gonna do it 10 millimeters. So I'm leaving just a little bit outside of the chuck and and now I know that I have to grind almost to the chuck. Of course that doesn't need to be so perfect, so... So I know that I have to go all the way almost to the end of the chuck. Okay, I'm gonna ori orient the two in this position, so when I turn it, I can go almost to the chuck. Almost. Okay, so let's measure how much is this now. So that's 19.29. Okay, so let me go now and turn this down all the way to the chuck to, uh, until it becomes round, more, more or less with this diameter, and then we're going to turn the, uh, the entire thing down to 19 millimeters. Okay, where's our support? <laughs> Okay, so what I did now is when I, on my last cut, I zeroed my hand wheel here and now I know exactly where my last cut was. Okay, I moved you a little bit, I believe that you're going to be able to see a little bit, a little bit better than from there. So now we're going to measure here this diameter. I'm trying to measure between turned parts. So we have 19.68. So that's, uh, we need to turn uh, 0 0.68, 0 0.75 is about 30 tau. Because one increment on my hand wheel here is uh, 1 tau or 0 0.025 of a millimeter. And here we have uh, 68 hundreds, which is 680 thousands. So we need approximately 30 increment increments here. Yeah, we need about 30 more increments of this. 30 times 25 is 750, right? So we need a little bit less than 30 increments, which is a little bit less than 30 tau. So from zero, because I zeroed it on our last turn here, so we're gonna go two times 10 tau, and we're gonna measure again. Okay. 
think that went a little bit too far somehow 1863 yeah because I forgot that actually if I want to take 10 tau off of here I have to add only five here because I'm taking from both sides of the diameter so I already went where I wanted so <laughs> that's good so we need a relief cut here for the threads right so we're gonna do that Okay, let's measure now. So that's 947, 9.5 millimeters. So we need to turn another millimeter and a half down, which means that we have to advance the tool by half of this distance, which is uh, 0.75 millimeters. One increment, which is 1000, equals 0 0.025 millimeters, which means that 10 tau is going to be 0.25 millimeters and 0.25 millimeters is one third of what we want to advance the tool, right? Because we want to advance it 0.75. So we need to advance the tool by 30 tau here. We're going to do 2 times 10 and we're going to measure again, okay? Just to make sure. And 843. Okay, 843 is almost 8.5. So now we need another half millimeter here. Uh, half millimeter divided by 2 is 25, 0.25, which is exactly 10 tau. So I'm going to advance the tool by 10 tau and we're going to go all the way till the end. So now this is going to be a little bit longer than 25 millimeters, but that's fine because I also want to cut a little bit of the end because of the hole for the support. But that's fine. Okay, I think now it is time to do the threads. So now for the beginners, beginners like me, when we cut threads, we have to make sure that the two moves in a perfect ratio with the spindle. Our thread here is going to be M8 by 125, right? Uh, 125 means that between the threads we need to have 1.25 millimeters, which means that one turn of the spindle, the two has to move by 1.25 millimeters. So this ratio is controlled by this power feed screw but we have to change some gears here to make sure that this screw is going to move the tool by exactly 1.25 millimeters while the spindle turns one full revolution. So these are the gears assuring that our spindle always turns in some ratio with our screw. So you see here there are one, two, three, four gears. And here on the cover we have a magic chart. We need a step of 125, 1.25, right? And now we have four gears that we can change, A, B, C and D. So we need in position A we need gear 50, which means 50 teeth. And our 50 teeth gear is this one. So this is our A gear. On position B we need 40, see, and 40 is this one. So that's our B gear. We don't need C gear, so in C position we won't have anything. And our D gear is 60. So 60 is this. So we have A, B and D only for 1.25 thread. So here we have a A, B, C and D gear. According to our chart, B and C share the same shaft. For our situation we don't need C gear, so we're going to have a, B and D gears only. We're going to avoid C. 
and we have a spacer here behind this. For, I, I believe now we're going to have to put this spacer after the other gear. So now it was in front of the gear, then it's going to be behind the gear, I guess. Of course, we're going to have to loosen this nut because now they're going to the four the three shafts are going to have to be in different uh, combination here. I don't know why this is not going in. This is like looks like 14 or 15. Yes. Well guys, I grew up in a metric country and even though I work on Triumphs now and it, everything is Imperial, it's like a little bit nostalgic now when I get to work with the metric again. Whatever. So this is called the banjo for some reason because it used to look like a banjo on the old legs. Now it doesn't look like banjo anymore, but they still call it banjo. So whatever. So now we need a 40 here. This looks should be together. This is how we Okay, I'm gonna keep this gear here as a spacer, I guess. And now we have to put this spacer on this side, I guess. Okay. And now we're gonna mesh with the other one here. We're gonna tighten this. 14 mil nut. Okay. Now to cut the threads we need to make sure two things. Well, there are probably a lot more than two things, but these are the things that I know and I'm paying attention for now. So first of all, our tip here needs to be at 60 degrees angle because that's what the threads are. Usually the, the standard threads have 60 degrees of cut there so uh, our insert has 60 degrees corner because here one two three uh, vertices are all of them are 60 degrees so because you know in, a, in each triangle has 180 degrees sum of the of all the vertices and here we have three vertices that are even so they are each 60 so that's 60 degrees and the other thing is our compound needs to be at 30 degrees angle to the work so we can advance by moving the compound and not the cross slide because if we advance by moving the cross slide the two the insert is plunging into the work directly straight and this means it's cutting with this side and this side at the same time but we don't want to do that we want it to cut with only one side which means that we can advance with the compound and because we have a 60 degrees here if our compound is at uh, half that which is 30. If we advance with the compound, this means that only this side uh, of the two is gonna cut. This one is gonna slide always. So it, it needs to be 30 or less, maybe 29 and a half is better. This way we're gonna make sure that this side of the two is not cutting. The insert is always gonna be at the same angle according to the work, but only one side of this is gonna be cutting. So that's the whole story about that thing. And now, we're gonna do our test cut here first very light and we're gonna measure okay, so I'm gonna zero it here and let's see now what's gonna happen I'm gonna now I have to use the power feed but by using the power feed I'm gonna have to make sure that I stop it right here the tool doesn't hit here okay so we're gonna do a test cut first very shallow so we can measure and see if this is corresponding to uh, 1.25 millimeters uh, threads. I'm gonna do it slow. Oh, almost. <laughs> so now here I have to say that my lathe doesn't have a thread count here, so when I start cutting thread, I can't unlock it. Once I lock the carriage to the screw, I have to uh, always retract the carriage with the power of the lathe. I can't unlock it. So now I'm, I'm gonna pull the tool back a little bit and I'm gonna change direction and that's how I'm gonna return the... So I have to stop earlier here because it's 
still takes time to go to the other end but well that's gonna be tricky anyway so that's 10 another 10 so now we go in this direction okay pull back where we were so now I can almost see where the threads are gonna be and I'm gonna measure now with my little tool here okay. so that's perfect okay so now we're gonna keep adding so I'm gonna add another 10 tau now and I'm gonna start the lathe in the right direction Thirty thou now. Retract. Turn. So now we're going to forty thou, which is zero. Change direction. Go back. we're almost there I can test it with the die there's a there are charts that tell you how much it needs to go further in and blah 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 but I'm just doing it by eye here so I'm gonna retract a little bit and change direction so we were at zero so now we're gonna go with 10 change direction <laughs> that was too fast I think we are exactly where we want to be I think this is where we're gonna stop it and we're gonna unlock the carriage and just gonna face this one more time and I'm gonna clean this up a little bit the end here There's this ring here that formed. I have to cut it somehow. Okay, and now we have to kill a little bit the threads on top. I'm gonna use this microscopic file here to do that. Okay, and with this, one of our parts is ready. Wow, <laughs> that was a lot of time but yeah okay good so now the only thing is we have to make another one <laughs> another one with female here right okay so um let's do that <laughs> 